Here we are, producer dude. We're back. I don't know people if they ever found out what you really did to get me to answer all these questions and fishing reports. They should probably don't want to know. They yeah, don't. They don't, they don't want to know. know. They don't. They're secrets. Anyhow, what do we have today? We're okay. encouraging people, even though sometimes I think people don't think we are. We want to hear the questions from you. We just don't want you asking stuff that involves a novel. Is that simple? That's simple. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. What do we got today? Well, we've got Robert Carper first, and he wants to know, and, and today we were just out shooting Dipsy Diver, so he's got a Dipsy Diver question. Oh, thanks, Robert. So he wants to know, uh, can you use Bandit Shallows on Dipsies? And if so, what length lead would you suggest? You absolutely can use shallow uh, Bandit, basically any shallow stick bait, spoon, crawler harness. You just don't want something that's going to dive and it's going to interact or counteract the the diving of, of the bait. So things that get, let's say, more than eight feet or so generally aren't the best on a dipsy diver. Leader length's really gonna depend on what the conditions you have. Um, you know, I would say in a stick bait, maybe six to eight feet, something like that, a rod length, excuse me, um, but four to 15. But if you're starting that probably six to eight foot range, it's gonna make netting and storing and all that uh, pretty good. And just mess with it, because leader length really does matter with dipsy divers. All right, so Chris Duck won. Okay, Duck. He wants to know, what would you rec recommend for a Zodiac Medline 7,5 with a Mercury Pro XS 300? Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. Or is two... I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. Right. Chris, here's the deal. you got to go to either the manufacturer of your boat and or the Mercury Prop Selector on Mercury's website because it's impossible. There's no fishing guy that can answer that question. I mean, props even within my own boat, and it really changes a lot on the load. There's a hundred factors. Mercury Prop Selector is what you want to go to. And then also consult, you know, the manufacturer of the boat, if it's Zodiac or, and then the dealer. Those guys are gonna have a pretty good idea, and they probably have some loaner props that you can try to kind of get you in before you drop some money on a nice fancy guy. Okay. Uh, this one's a twofer. He, this, this guy, Stony Greek. Stony, is he getting a little greedy? And uh, Greek, not greedy. He's not getting greedy because two questions. Oh, two questions, yes. Yeah. One was three weeks ago, one was two weeks ago. He sounds like he's from my neck of the woods. Um, he wants to know what his trolling speed should be in early, early August off Bowles Harbor. You know, these are questions, I mean, I'll give you an answer, but they're not. Th these are questions that, you know, it's like saying, why is the sky blue a little bit? It depends on what you're doing. You know, are you, are you trolling spoons? You're going to need to go faster. Are you trolling crankbaits? Maybe not as fast. You know, spinners, you're going to be going slower. You want to go as fast as you can and not have a production drop-off, meaning you want to cover as much water as you can and get a, in front of as many fish as you can, but still catch, not have a drawback because you're going too fast. So, you know, with spoons, that may be two and a half miles an hour. With crankbaits, it may be two to two and a half. With spinners, it may be one and a half to two. Mess with S turns, and then you're gonna have a slow side and a fast side on the boat, and that way you're gonna determine each and every day, and even within the hour, if they want a little slower or a little faster. All right, now his second question, which was from two weeks ago, uh, and I believe this is in reference to uh, you and your old pal, Joe Cermelli, getting the band back together uh, a few weeks ago for a project coming up. Yeah. Uh, he wants to know if the true name of your band is the Dickweeds. Oh, you know, I saw that one actually. Dude, I, I just answered your question. You're gonna be, you're gonna give me some rash crap like that. We don't. I have, love it. I love it. Yeah, I know you do. We, we he, he loves just so you know. Producer loves when guys yeah. giving me crap. But no, we don't have a band. We are the band. We're like the nameless band. Okay. Like the who? Exactly. <laughs> the where? Mugs my dog. Okay, Mugs. I like these names. Yeah. These names that, that's more me. fun than anything are the it names. It really is. Um, when you run inline boards, do you put your longest lead, the deepest, on the farthest board or the closest to the boat? I run mine on the inside uh, because, you know, if I'm going to possibly hang up, um, I want to be able to get at that and not take out my whole side. Uh, I also, for me, I clear that and check it the most, and so I want that closest to the boat. And then, you know, just realistically, I, 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 I tend to move that up and down more. Um, and then I guess the factor of spooking, you know, you want your, at least I want my highest baits the farthest away from the boat and the closest ones to be the deepest from a spooking factor. So that's kind of why I do that. All right. Um, Tis the season for thermocline. Oh. Um, should I fish above or below? And that's from PB. PB. Well, it depends, you know, a lot of times what you're thinking of thermocline is just the temperature break. Drop your fish hawk down there and you can see the temperature and see what we really have going on. 
but generally speaking, you're gonna wanna be just above the thermocline because that's where that water change is gonna be and the oxygen is gonna be. Now, there are times during a temperature break and not a thermocline that you're gonna have that also below that line that you're thinking is the thermocline, so you can catch them below that. But generally speaking, you're gonna be just above it. Uh, Luke Johnson wants to know. It's kind of boring, but I like it. Yeah, he didn't come up with a creative name. It's just, just I respect that. Sounds though. like a country singer, maybe. He might Luke be. Johnson. I respect that. Um, why don't we see you doing very much casting, sharpshooting for fish? Sharpshooting. Well, you're going to see some more of that. You know, we're shooting some videos, but you have to understand on Lake Erie, that just isn't where I primarily fish. We have to cover a lot of water. Me and producer dude drove 50 miles today. Um, you know, you're fishing spot on stuff and a lot of what we're doing is fishing open water fish and staying on those and finding those, you're just not going to sharpshoot. And then you're only using one rod where we're going to use 6, 8, 9, 12. So it's not as productive in most cases. Not all cases, um, but we've got some new stuff with a live, mega live sonar that you'll be seeing in, in certain circumstances that's pretty naughty. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to give you advanced warning on this. I want you to stay calm, okay, on this question. Okay. I'm. Fair warning, it's from Greg Purs. What is your recommended Dipsy setup? Greg, did you watch our <laughs> video called Everything Dipsies, or what was it called? Like all Everything to know about Dipsy Divers. Yeah, seriously, yes. you guys, that's kind of like an ask whole question, but uh, the setup, I think honestly he needs to watch that video. Is that fair? That's fair. I mean, we give it, we give the whole enchilada there just on that. We won't waste four minutes on that setup. We literally, from start to finish, rod, reel, lure, everything. So. Watch that video. Producer dude did an excellent job putting it together. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, talking about generic names, Mike. Just, just Mike. I like that. Okay. Why do you use an engine cover? Well, there's a couple answers. I'm only going to give you one of them. Um, I can't tell you one of them to be perfectly honest, but uh, you know, it, one added benefit that I found from some of the other stuff that I had to do was it definitely keeps things from being scratched and, and clean. You know, I get a new boat every year and I want to keep it as nice as I can and I lean up against that thing netting. So it's really a nice thing for keeping everything from bird poop to scratches from your pants, your belts, shoes, whatever it may be, flying lures. Um, and a lot easier to keep the thing clean. So would highly recommend one. Just make sure you get a really good one so you don't damage your motor um, telling. That's good, he's paying attention. He's checking everything out That's, that you do. I, I might even know what mic that is because we have a mic that does our stuff and he's very OCD. Okay. Thanks for paying attention. Some of you guys are really paying attention and other guys are following along and we do appreciate the questions. We like to answer things that don't require a novel response, if that's the case. Probably book a trip with us and do an educational trip with bigwaterfishing.com. You can find all that stuff. But thanks again for tuning in. And you know, some of you guys, it's not that we don't like you, but like the Dipsy question, we've already done a video on that. You gotta pay a little closer attention because uh, we give you A to Z on some of these things. So make sure you look back through our playlist and see some of the stuff because we've got an awful lot of stuff. Producer has been going tirelessly, loading these things up, making sure we got everything covered.